Hello everyone, Madhusudan Raj. This is 29 September 2012, and today I'm in front of you to discuss uh, one of these uh, emails which is circulating on on the internet uh, regarding the black money. Uh, many of you are already knowing that in India, this uh, whole issue of uh, corruption is very much in limelight because of the whole anti-corruption movement of the Gandhian, so-called Gandhian crusader uh, Anna Hazare and his uh, team of Arvind Kejriwal and other people. Uh, although I'm still, uh, since long time I'm saying that all these people are uh, just, uh, I'm not sure about Anna Hazare, but uh, many of his team members are only uh, only interested in political power and ultimately that's what they are doing. They are uh, now going to form their own political party and uh, they think that by joining politics they are going to uh, change this system. And as uh, those who are aware about the true nature of state and the way in which the system functions and uh, the purposes for which the state is being you know, formed, organized in the first place, they know that such uh, such thoughts that somebody can go inside the political system and change it from inside are just dreams, you know. Uh, you can see that even uh, a so staunch principal uh, a guy like Dr. Ron Paul, he could not make many changes, you know, actually he did not want to use politics on his own, he just wanted to use it as a bully pulpit to spread the message of liberty and Austrian economics all over the world and he is very successful in doing that. He is one of the honest, you know, politician to, uh, no, he's not a politician actually, he's saying that he's not a politician. Honest person you'll find in that, in that, you know, political cesspool, although he's going to retire next year. But what I'm saying, what I want to discuss today is this, you know, email which is circulating on, on internet which is saying uh, that what will happen if the black money comes back to India. So first what I will do is I will I will tell you that what this uh, people are saying, I don't know who made this you know, email, but it's very interesting because uh, a lot of economic absurdities and a lo lot of economic nonsense is uh, uh, filled into that. So that's why I just want to expose this kind of stupid, uh, this kind of faulty economic reasoning and many people who are thinking that if this black money can come back from the Swiss banks then that is going to help the Indian economy uh, and this this email is representation of this kind of wishful thinking. So let us see what this uh, email is saying and then I'll one by one explore the fallacies you know, in, you know, uh, of this email. Uh, they are saying that, uh, do you know what will happen if 1,456 uh, lakh crore rupees of black money comes back from the Swiss bank, then uh, first thing they are saying that India will be financially <laughs> number one. Uh, then they are saying that each district will get 60,000 crore rupees and one village will get 100 crore rupees then they're saying that there is there will be no need to pay any taxes for next 20 years if this uh, thousands of lakhs of crore rupees comes back to India then they're saying that uh, the petrol prices will uh, come down to 25 rupees per liter and diesel price will come down to 15 rupees per liter and uh, milk will be selling at 8 rupees per liter they're saying that no need to pay electricity bill, Indian borders will become more stronger than the China wall, 1500 Oxford like universities can be opened in India if this money comes back from the Swiss bank, uh, India will have 28,000 kilometers of rubber road like Paris uh, uh, and 2000 hospitals with all facilities and all medicines for free. 95 crore people will have their own houses and then the email ends by saying that support India 
by forwarding this message to at least 10 Indians. I did my job, now it's your turn to forward this. Of course, I did not forward this message to any one of my friends and immediately one of my students sent this email to me and I immediately rebutted it and I told them that if this money is going to come back then none of this thing is actually going to happen you know anyone who is aware about the basic laws of demand and supply understands that if this black money so called black money comes back to india then it is only going to result into inflation because this money which is in the swiss bank is nothing more than useless piece of paper and i'm sure it is not even physical notes these are all just uh, computer digits on uh, Swiss banks, you know, computers. So if this 1,456 lakh crore rupees come into India, then India will not be financially number one. In fact, India will be financially ruined completely. Because uh, this is a very old fallacy, mercantilist fallacy, that money is a true representation of wealth. And as I said, it's just a fallacy. Money is not a true rep representation of wealth. Actually, money is not at all wealth. Money is just simply a common medium of exchange, which is much better, you know, which can function in a much better way when its supply is scarce, not when its supply is, you know, abundant or when it is available in plentiful supply. As I said, money, you know, evolved as just another, you know, it evolved from just another commodity in the market, just another merchandise in the market. And historically, gold and silver, these two commodities, you know, evolved as a common medium of exchange. So, because money is just another commodity in the market, you know, uh, exchange process, it's, it's, its price, its value is also determined by its purchasing power, its value is also determined by its demand and supply. So, if the demand, if you assume that the demand of money is, you know, not changing and the supply increases, then as, as I said in my past video blogs also, that the purchasing power of money, whatever available currency notes are, you know, circulating in the economy at that time and this new influx of lakhs of crores or rupees is coming from the Swiss banks, and when it enters into the Indian economy sector uh, by sector, it will start to dilute the purchasing power of already existing, you know, currency notes into the Indian economy. So India will not be financially number one. India will be completely financially ruined because the moment you know this uh, money will start, you know, uh, these currency notes will start entering the economy. It will start increasing the prices of various goods and services sector by sector, what we call the Cantillon effect. And those people who will receive this money, firstly, only they are going to benefit a little bit out of that. Those people who are going to receive this money in the end, they are going to get into a lot of trouble because prices will really go very high because these are. Now we are talking about thousands and lakhs of crores of rupees and these people are saying that each district will get 60,000 and one village will get 100 crores. Just imagine if this amount of money is going into people's hand and you know they are going to go and spend this money in the market. It's going to ravage the you know Indian economy. It will result into most probably hyperinflation, not even inflation, surely a very high level of inflation. Because money is not wealth, as I said, real wealth is the production of final consumption goods, things like shoes and clothes and watch and mobile phone and car and food and vegetable and fruits and uh, clothing and home and stuff like that, real economic goods, that is the true rep representation of wealth. Money is a common medium of exchange and if it is su its supply is increasing, then its purchasing power will reduce and that money will buy less and less of economic goods. So instead of making people rich, it is going to make people poorer. They are saying that there will be no need to pay any kind of taxes for next year. But as I said, inflation itself is going to be a biggest tax. The people, people who are having money in their pocket, it will completely lose its purchasing power. It will become worthless. So it's, it's hidden, you know, stealing from your pocket. You will, you know, not even, you know, be able to use that money which you are going to get, you know, from this Swiss bank. Before you go and spend that money in the market, the prices will be so high that all that money will lose all its purchasing power. 
and and I can just simply cannot fathom that how this this influx of money from outside Swiss bank is going to result into lower prices of petrol, diesel, milk, and how you will not have to pay you know any kind of electricity bill. In fact, petrol, diesel, milk, and all other products will become so costly. The price will go so high that as I said you know the whole monetary system actually will collapse and the rupee will lose all its value if you assume that all these thousands of lakhs of crores of rupees are going to go into the market people are going to spend it right you will have you cannot even imagine in fact that you know electricity bill will be so high that many people will simply not be able to pay it because you know you have to understand that without the increase in production of petrol in, in the in increase of production of milk in the increase of production of electric electric power this the prices can never come down prices are just exchange ratios and they are determined by you know two sides of the transaction on one side you have real economic goods you know whose demand and supply as well as on the other side the money which is a common medium of exchange its demand and supply these four factors combined together in the transaction post process determine the price of various you know goods and services so if the supply of money is going up nothing is you know happening with the real wealth the production of goods and services price is only going to rise nothing more than that Indian borders will become more stronger. I don't think so because uh, India's economy will be ruined, monetary system will collapse, and this so-called India will be very much weaker, very much vulnerable at, at at that time. You know, it is very much possible that the surrounding countries will take these chances to even attack India. And because the economy is in shambles, I don't think so. People will be able to protect you know uh, their property this country so it will be much more vulnerable in this situation if this black money comes into India and starts you know circulating into the economy uh, 1500 Oxford like university forget about 1500 Oxford like universities you know what is so great about Oxford like universities I don't understand <laughs> but that's a different issue which I'll discuss you know some other time so you won't be able to, you know, in fact, those, you know, universities which are functioning right now, they will have to close down because the inflation will be so high. 28,000 kilometers of road, as I said, money is not represented, pre representation of true wealth. So you will need, you know, resources to build this roads. Money is just going to increase the prices, just going to reduce the purchasing power. No 2,000 hospitals will be there. Medicine cannot be for free. In fact, medicine will become so costly that people will die because they will not be able to buy them. It will be like, you know, 1920s Weimar Germany hyperinflation or just, you know, four years back, 2008, Zimbabwe hyperinflation when uh, their central bank printed endless amount of money, $100 trillion note were printed. And no, that country did not prosper. Zimbabwe, in fact, the economy was completely ruined. There, you know, the inflation rate was in, you know, hexa trillion percent, and the unemployment rate reached to to 98 percent when in hyperinflation was at its peak. You know, for something like two years. So, the influx of new money is going to ruin the economy. It is going to crash the whole monetary system and the financial system of India. No 95 crore people will be able to, you know, own their own house. You know, will be able to own their own houses in fact whatever property they will have that's going to get into trouble also because you know in this mayhem when the financial system will collapse it will be very difficult to protect your property because there will be you know all kind of you know trouble going on social chaos will be there not only economic problems but this will definitely result into social chaos also so those people who are thinking that you know if this black money can come back to India and and if it does come back then that is going to solve all India's problem for 30-40 years they are they are absolutely dreaming they are completely ignorant of the basic economic laws of demand and supply it's very simple but yet very difficult for most of the people to comprehend. So those people who think that Anna Hazare is a crusader and he's going to help the Indian economy by bringing back this, you know, black, you know, money from outside, I, they are they are making a big mistake, you know, by supporting Anna Hazare's this kind of movement. I understand, 
political corruption is bad right but if you want to remove political corruption then you have to remove the source of that political corruption and that source is bureaucracy so unless and until you are going to you know, uh, re you know, remove the bureaucracies, you know, corruption is, political corruption is not going to vanish. So I, I don't think so you are going to support India by forwarding this message to 10 people. Please, please don't believe in this kind of nonsense and it is much better that you just, you know, this money does not enter India. Alright, so this, mu this much is enough for this week. Thank you very much for watching and I'll be back with you soon in next week or so. Bye-bye.